Signs God is working in your life. Isaiah 64, verse 8 But now, O Lord, Thou art our Father, we are the clay, and Thou our potter, and we all are the work of Thy hand. None of us will suddenly grow to become what God wants us to be. Growth requires time and process. The more we yield our lives to God, the more His work will be manifested in us, and the better we become. God wants to work in everyone's life, but not everyone yields to Him. And that is the reason we all have varying degrees of relationship with God. Our lives can greatly blend with the heart of God, so much so that we would be His true representatives on earth. We all can walk with God like Enoch and enjoy such a great intimacy with Him. Genesis 5 verse 24 And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. That same God is still in the business of molding lives. He is the potter, and we are the clay. We are all His workmanship. Let's consider three signs God is working in your life. Your degree of conformity to the heart of God will determine how much experience of these signs you have got in your own life. I think this will be a good way for us to evaluate our walk with God. The first sign is the evidence of the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians 5 verses 22 to 23 But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Jesus taught that by the fruit that people bear, we shall know who they really are. This does not apply to false prophets. This is the fruit that every believer is expected to bear too. What proves that a tree is growing is that it begins to produce fruit in certain seasons. If you are truly growing as a believer, the evidence of the fruit of the Holy Spirit will be seen in your life. A tree does not announce to people that it is bearing fruits, but everyone will see it themselves. Believers do not need to carry labels before people will notice that God is working on them and in them. The kind of fruit you bear announces how much you have surrendered yourself to God to work upon. The works of the flesh manifest in the lives of those who have not given their totality to Christ. However, as we grow as believers and in our walk with God, our growth is made evident by the fruit of the Spirit which we begin to bear. It is no doubt that everyone that has God working in their lives will bear these fruits. It is not possible not to bear fruit if God is working in your life. As a matter of fact, the fruit you are bearing is the evidence that God is working in your life. And it is this evidence that will appear to everyone around you. The fruit of the Spirit is the reward of your consistent walk with God. This is what differentiates the fruits of the Spirit from the gifts of the Spirit. You may receive the gifts of the Spirit the very day you gave your life to Christ, but you grow in the fruits of the Spirit as you consistently walk with God. The fruit of the Spirit is produced in believers when they consistently carry out spiritual activities such as fasting, praying, studying of the Bible, evangelism, and obedience. Love is the principal fruit of the Spirit, which produces other characters like peace, joy, faithfulness, long-suffering, and kindness among others. The Bible establishes that God is love. He is directly equated to love. That means that we can call God love. If love is the personality of God, there is no way love will not manifest in the life of those that God is working upon. I have never seen anyone who walked consistently with God that does not bear the fruit of the Spirit. Such people are loving, patient, joyful, faithful, and kind. The joy that oozes out of the lives of those that God is working on is such a great one. 
It is not birth by pleasant circumstances, but by the Holy Spirit. That is the reason such people can smile in the midst of challenges. They are joyful, even when they do not have all that they need. This kind of joy is usually mysterious to the people of the world. Again, you cannot prove that God is working in your life if you are not patient, gentle, good, meek, and faithful. All these are attributes of God, and there's no way they won't show up in your life if God is working in your life. I want us to acknowledge that the degree to which we surrender ourselves to God is the degree to which His character will be reflected in us. God isn't the one that will determine how much His character will be formed in us. Already, God wants us all to become like Him, but He cannot force Himself on us. We all have to make the choice to submit to Him or to rebel against Him. Although we have our choices to make, the consequence of our choices are already predetermined. If you allow God in your heart and you give Him ample time in your life, you will see Him working in your life. The second sign is a passion for lost souls going to hell, for lost souls to come to Christ. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 11 Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. There is no one who has God working in his or her life that will not want others to come into such sweet union with the Lord. Usually, people who God is working in their lives carry the burden of sinners in their hearts. They get sad that many souls are perishing, going into a place of eternal torment. If truly you have been saved, and you yield yourself to the operation of God in your life, you can never find it comfortable not to preach the gospel. The heartbeat of God is for the souls of human beings. Therefore, people that have God working in their lives will desire to make God happy by winning souls into His kingdom. Apostle Paul concluded that those who truly know the terror of God will persuade men to repent. To persuade means to urge or pacify someone to do something. Why is it that we give up on sinners so easily? Why is it that many of us think that the gospel is for a certain set of people and that there are others that are not worthy to hear the good news of Christ? Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians 9 verses 16 to 17, For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of, for necessity is laid upon me. Yea, woe is unto me, if I preach not the gospel. For if I do this thing willingly, I have a reward. But if against my will, a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me. For Paul, preaching the gospel is not merely trying to help God. Rather, he was partnering with him in the work of salvation that God is carrying out on the earth. Everyone that God is relating with would definitely see soul winning as a necessity. Paul was so motivated in the soul winning. The same passion for souls burns in the hearts of people who have God working in their lives. They cannot imagine living comfortably where sinners are without preaching the gospel. Do you have a passion for lost souls or you don't seem to be concerned about sinners? Has your passion for lost souls led you to preach the gospel to the unbelievers around you or in your workplace? When last did you pray fervently that the light of the glorious gospel of Christ should shine upon all sinners in your neighborhood? If you have God working in your life, you will obey His bidding to preach the gospel. Preaching the gospel is the great commission that Christ gave to all believers. Unfortunately, some have shifted his responsibility to evangelists alone. Every believer is saved to rescue others. The third sign is overcoming sin you have been struggling with for years. Romans 5 verses 19 to 21 For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, 
so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered, that the offence might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. It is true and faultless that whosoever comes to God will not be cast away. You can come to God the way you are. He doesn't restrict anyone from coming to Him. However, you can only come to God the way you are. You cannot follow Him that same way. If you have come to God, He will have to strip you of your old self. There is no one that ever comes to God without having the story of a changed life. The Bible says that even though sin entered the world through one man, Adam, because of disobedience, in the same way, by the righteousness of Christ, we are brought into God's righteousness. The power to walk victoriously over sin has been granted to us in Christ. That is the reason Paul said that where sin abounds, grace abounds in a greater measure. As you offer your body as a living sacrifice to God, according to the admonition of Paul in Romans 12 verse 1, God will begin to work on you, to the extent that your inner man will be strengthened to resist the sins that easily beset you before you came to Him. The nearer you get to God, and the longer you stay with Him, the more your sinful nature will be dissolved. Every sin you have been struggling with for years will begin to lose its grip over your life. Your appetite for such sin will diminish in God's presence. This is a serious indication that God is working in your life. Your relationship with God and your propensity to sin are inversely related. That is, if your relationship with God increases, your propensity to sin will be reduced. But if your intimacy with God is on a low key, then your appetite for sin will skyrocket. Paul said something very profound in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 31, which reads, I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. I die daily. It's really great to ponder on the phrase, I die daily. This is the summary of the life of those God is working in their lives they will keep from one level of perfection to the other. Every day they have something to repent from. I'm not talking just about a weakness that someone failed to discipline himself or herself about. But you see, the closer we get in our walk with God, the clearer we would see our faults. You just have to keep working on yourself as the Holy Spirit reveals you to you. Most importantly, when God is working in your life, you will be amazed at the way you get irritated by the same sinful habits you once enjoyed practicing. The strength to overcome the sins you have been struggling with will be released from above. The Bible says that out of the fullness of Christ, we have all received grace for grace. Shortcut to get God's peace. Isaiah 32 verse 17, New King James Version. The work of righteousness will be peace, and the effect of righteousness, quietness and assurance forever. Everybody loves peace, even if they do not know the source. There are many preachers of peace in the world, including world bodies like the UN. There is, however, peace that is unique that comes from God. Peace within means peace without. What is peace? The World Peace Newsletter describes peace the following way. The greatest thing in life is eternal peace, external peace, and global peace. Peace is the key ingredient to happiness. Peace within means peace without. Be the change you wish to see in the world.
peace starts from within. A change in perception leads to a change in attitude, which leads to a change in behavior, which leads to a change in the world. Life is what you make it. Learn peace, teach peace, share peace. Whilst these are grains of truth, ultimate peace and real peace comes from God. Today we live in a world that is spiraling out of control, where evil is multiplying, the poor are oppressed, the love of many has grown icy cold, and a deep-seated hatred of both the chosen nation and the Christian church is escalating out of control. Isaiah 32 verse 17, according to the Amplified Bible Classic Edition, and the effect of righteousness will be peace, internal and external, and the result of righteousness will be quietness and confident trust forever. The death and resurrection of Christ has ensured that one day this peace-producing righteousness, this shalom creating knowledge of God, will fill the entire universe according to Colossians 1 verse 19 and 20. The King James Version reads, For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell, and, having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him, I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. John 1 verse 5 And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. But until that happens, the individual Christian and even more so the community of Christ's body here on earth, is an outpost and foretaste of that righteousness. We claim and live in this stage of peace-bearing righteousness as we are increasingly conformed to the image of God's beauty, as He has revealed Himself to us in Christ by virtue of our faith in and union to our slain and risen Lord. But Jesus, is the King of Righteousness, and the work of righteousness which He carried out on the cross of Calvary brings peace with God to all those who believe in His name. And in His grace, He pours the precious peace of God into the hearts of all His children who walk in spirit and truth. Peace within means peace without. May we, the body of Christ, rest in his peace in this hostile, violent world, and look up and lift our heads as our redemption draws nigh when Jesus comes in the clouds to rapture his bride and take us into heaven to be with him. King David declared, I will fear no evil, according to Psalm 23 verse 4. David's hidden man remained unmoved, undisturbed in heart, no matter what Satan threw at him. Why? Because he was fully at rest in God's faithfulness to perform his word. Peace within means peace without. King David was able to say, I've had a revelation of my father's love and patience toward me. Therefore, I will accept no more lies from the devil. I know better than to listen to him any more because the Holy Ghost has educated me. Let storms of trouble come, let demons rage, let enemies rise on all sides, let sickness and even death stare me in the face. My heart is at rest because I know all things are in my Father's hands and he's working everything for my good. Isaiah 32 verse 17 According to the Amplified Bible, Classic Edition, and the effect of righteousness will be peace, internal and external, and the result of righteousness will be quietness and confident trust forever. In that saying, I will fear no evil, it is an expression of trust and internal peace in King David. 
Indeed, it is a statement of peace to say the Lord is my shepherd. Peace within means peace without. You and I must have this peace. Some of us are always murmuring because of the absence of peace. Why would God allow this to happen? What am I going to do? Our lives are full of chaos at times, fear and murmuring because we have forfeited all resources God has put at our disposal to have peace and maintain it. We have neglected to hide God's word in our hearts so that we are able to turn to it in times of crisis. The only righteousness that frightens Satan away is the righteousness of faith. The work of righteousness shall be peace, and the effect of righteousness quietness and assurance forever. Isaiah 32 verse 17 You can't stand against the devil simply because you don't drink or use drugs anymore. You may live by an entire catalog of do's and don'ts, but those aren't the essence of God's righteousness. Righteousness is believing that what God says is true and committing your life to it. It is that simple, and this commitment comes with God's peace. Jesus describes this peace. John 14 verse 27 New King James Version Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. When Isaiah says, the effect of righteousness is quietness and assurance forever, Simply put, faith in God's promise of forgiveness produces an unshakable confidence in us. We may still be sorely tempted, but we know Jesus is at work in us. John 14 verse 27, according to the Passion Translation, I leave the gift of peace with you, my peace, not the kind of fragile peace given by the world but my perfect peace. Don't yield to fear or be troubled in your hearts. Instead, be courageous. John 14 verse 27 According to the voice, my peace is the legacy I leave to you. I don't give gifts like those of this world. Do not let your heart be troubled or fearful. May the peace of Christ guard our hearts, knowing that you have already gained the victory over sin and death. For all who believe in the name Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God. Isaiah 26 verse 3 You keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you, because he trusts in you. Isaiah 32 verse 17, according to the Amplified Bible Classic Edition, and the effect of righteousness will be peace, internal and external, and the result of righteousness will be quietness and confident trust forever. God bless you.